Hello everybody and welcome to the table. Today we are taking a look at a brand new knife from a brand I've never heard of. So this is from Tecto and this is a California legal out the front knife. So this right here is called the A2 Badger. And so up until about a week ago, week ago I've never heard of Tecto as a brand, but I saw an advertisement that they had on and I decided to purchase this knife kind of sight unseen, you know, so to speak because of the looks. It looks very tactical, looks very durable, very rugged. And so for the price, we're gonna see how this knife compares to some other California legal autos I have on the table. And of course, I'll give you my thoughts and uh, opinions on this knife. So these are all first impressions for a brand new knife out of the package. So of course, let's take a look at the blade. We can see our sub two inch D2 steel blade right here. This has a black coated finish on it. And the only markings are what I think is the Tecto logo. So it's kind of like a skull themed thing. And all of the offerings of this knife were avail available with the Tanto blade with the black coating. They also offered this, uh, the handles in black. And I believe there was a like a, a green as well. So I went with the tan color because of course uh, I have a couple of black knives already on the table. I wanted some some color to pop and I think it looks really nice. So let's take a look at the size of this knife. So on the ruler here, we can check it out. And of course it's California legal. So the overall length you can see is short of five and a half inches. That's maybe like five and three eighths with the glass breaker tip. And the blade itself, the cutting edge is about one and three quarters, but it still of course comes underneath that two inch California legal blade length limit. So what makes this knife different from so many other OTFs out there in the same style? When I first noticed this, I first took it out of the box. The robustness was pretty impressive, to be honest. We have aluminum handles with the coating on there. And the coating, it, it's not, it doesn't have a super texture, but it does feel good. And there are these grooves machined in. So you can get a pretty good grip on the knife, which is nice, which is very nice. I do like the colors they offer it in, so I am glad that I was able to get this um, this tan color. We also have a deep carry pocket clip. I don't really like the name brand billboarded on there quite so much, but it is reversible. So I, it looks like we could unscrew this glass breaker tip and you could reverse that to left or right hand side carry. And of course a big lanyard area in the back as well if you wanna go that route. And for a small knife like this, you might wanna do that. You can see the opening hole right there and the switch on top. The switch has pretty good grip to it, so no issues opening or retracting the blade. Um, in toying with this since I've gotten it, there have been no uh, failures to fire, so that's always positive report. And so what we can see here, we can see the edge, the uh, bevel is pretty thin, and straight out of the box, it didn't slice paper very cleanly. So I did put it to a leather strop on my WorkSharp with some compound on it. And uh, now it does slice a lot easier. So that could just be an issue with factory edges. You just gotta be careful when you sharpen knives this small because if you use a stone system, you can sometimes ding the uh, aluminum handles and then it just looks a little bit more worn than it should be. Not a big deal, but it's something that happens. Um, in terms of play in the blade, very minimal, very minimal. There's always going to be some blade play in an OTF, but I think this is good. I do like how the pocket clip carries, nice and deep, easy to get out of pocket, and that's kind of a big thing. So many knives have a clip that's so tight, you can't pull it out once it's in. And But this comes in and out of pocket, no problem. Even the texture here doesn't really hurt you in that factor. I do like the handle grip. It has this nice groove here for your finger. Um, and that's something I think more of these knives should offer because especially since they're so small, you don't get a lot of grip to begin with. So they should add lots of texturing, grooves, things like that. But we have on the table, of course, quite a few knives from every budget category. So from low budget to expensive, all right here. So we can do just some quick side-by-side -side comparisons. And so, of course, for the cheapest knife on the table, we have the Lightning Fireball. And so we can see the overall size right next to each other. Let's put those together. So overall length is actually quite similar. The Fireball is robust just because it's made out of a cheaper metal. So it has to be quite thick to contain all of the mechanisms. Uh, but it is a very reliable, very easy to access knife. 
And uh, the fact that this one's like a $40 knife, essentially, it's very, very attainable, which is great because this category of knives tends to err towards the expensive end. So this was the Lightning OTF. Um, we do have a Cobra Tech as well. The Cobra Tech California Legal line tend to be small. They tend to have blade lengths well under two inches, and they're playing it safe, of course. But as a result, these body sizes end up being quite small as well. So you can see the size difference there thickness as well. But Cobra Tech does make some good stuff. And they were actually the company that OEM'd the Boker USB. That's right here. And this guy I carried for quite a while. No pocket clip. Just a simple action on this blade here. So it looks really nice. So let me just side by side again. And of course, being a Cobra Tech made knife, you can see it's smaller than the average California Legal Auto, even smaller, you know, being in that category. Um, but when we get to some U.S. made knives, and now, of course, this one right here on the box, we see it's made in Portland, Maine of U.S. and imported parts. So not surprising. Um, and so it's not entirely U.S. made, but it is uh, manufactured or put together here, at least in the United States. And you're supporting, of course, an American company when you purchase this. But this right here is made entirely in the U.S. This is, this is the Hoag um, Micro Incursion. So very similar in shape, but taking a look at the size, we can see that the Tecto's body is a bit larger. So it gives you more grip. So I really like the Hogue. I like the style of this knife, the shape of it. Um, again, it has all those same positive attributes with the grooves to hold on to, a lot of texturing. Um, but the, text, the Tecto just does one up by making it a slightly larger handle to purchase onto. So we can see thickness is there, deep carry pocket clips on both, but just a little bit more grip. And so this is a category of knife where I think more grip is probably a good thing. And uh, we have an oddball here in the center. So this is a D-Rocket design knife. I think it's called the Talon, but this is a single action auto. So titanium handles, it meant more for it to be a showpiece, I think. So we can see that, but still let's make the side by side. And we can see they're quite similar in overall length. Uh, thickness, again, being a single action, it's a lot thinner. You know, more of a showpiece than anything with that that blade that's totally open. You know, it's 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 a cool design, really, but uh, maybe not the most practical thing on the planet. Um, but then we kind of go into like a big price jump. You know, we're going to the Microtex. And so this knife probably isn't meant to compete with Microtech. The retail price on the A2 Badger here is a 140. And now I purchased it with a coupon code, so it was a little bit less than that. But I still think that um, it, it's not necessarily competing with Microtech, but is it a good alternative? So this right here is the UTX 70. And so we can just hold those side by side. And of course, the UTX-70 is longer, but it has kind of that, you know, kind of like a, a stick of bubblegum shape handle. So it's really thin, very um, easy to carry, easy to put in pocket. Uh, so not really necessarily competition here, but still cool for comparison's sake. You can see the thickness there. This is just a really, really nice little thin blade. Um, but what really compares well to it, this right here is the, the Mini Trudon. So we can see this one side by side. And these two knives, now look at the length and size, even right down to that Tanto blade. Very, very similar in size. Very, very similar in thickness because this knife is, again, meant to be more used. Uh, more hands-on, lots of texturing, lots of grip to it. So just very much has that Microtech feel versus, you know, the unbranded type of knife. So very much similar to the, you know, in style, except that, of course, this knife here is going to cost you north of, you know, $300 more than more than likely. Um, so this is our mini Trudon. And, of course, last but not least, we have the Microtech Exocet. So this is our Bounty Hunter Edition. And it's just such a wide body. It's a neat comparison lengthwise. You can see, again, very similar Tanto blade, but this is meant to be kind of like a money clip knife, a show off knife, if anything. Um, so really, you know, different different category of blade to be sure. 
Um, but it's neat to see comparisons. I liked all this variety. Variety is a great thing. Competition is an even better thing in the knife world. So I'm glad that a company like Tecto, who I've never heard of before, but they do actually have a nice run of knives. If you go to their website, they have quite a few to choose from. Some autos, some folders, um, a lot of variety there. And the box and uh, quality of this is great. So we can see it came with a little, this is adorable, isn't this, this pouch here? Look at this thing brand there and we have a little velcro strap and the knife fits right inside this is like a micro adorable sheath and it came in there in the package so that's kind of a cool little add-on but quality packaging is nice if you're going to gift the knife and uh, this is something that you could easily give as a utility knife to anybody uh california or not it works well and i think it would take a beating and just given how robust it feels in hand so I know this video went a little longer than I had planned, but I made some comparisons. I gave you my thoughts on the knife. It seems solid, and if you can get it on sale, definitely pick one up. Um, but at 140 do you think it's worth it versus buying maybe a Hogue uh, micro incursion? Now, I know inflation is a thing, so these may not be available for that price anymore. But that being said, the Tecto is a nice knife, in my opinion. Bought it with my own money, shipped to me, so there's nothing crazy going on here. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this knife. Really nice action. Great to look at. Hope you all have a nice day, everyone. See you later.